Welcome back to the channel guys and today just like I promised you guys in my last video we're gonna be attempting to start this Marauder today and we're gonna do it on the ground and I'm gonna show you guys how to create basically a swap harness a harness that could go in anything you run your power you run your grounds and you can start this up in any vehicle I haven't seen any videos like that being built off of the stock 4.6 harness so I'm gonna just tinker with it and try my best to get it started on the ground and I'll come back and show you guys how I did it. It's extremely hot today, so I won't be able to put that head cam on or leave this camera in the sun because it will get damaged. It's like the middle of the day, so I'm gonna do all of the work and then I'm gonna walk you guys through the steps on how you can do this for yourself. So let's get into today's video. Alright guys, so I'm gonna call it quits for a while. This sun is just tearing me up. So I'm gonna show you how far I've uh, reached so far. It's like 1.30 in the day. I'm probably gonna come back around 5.30, 6 o'clock when the sun is uh, lower in the sky. But this is as far as I've gotten. I have the motor resting on two wooden blocks and the gearbox. That's the second wooden block there. Everything is in, spark plugs, um, coil packs, this is the wire harness. I'm probably gonna, when I come back later, I'll do the wire harness, but I didn't even take off the flywheel, or not the flywheel, the flex plate that was for the transmission. I just left it on because I needed a fork and a release bearing for this and I ordered it and it hasn't arrived as yet. So I didn't think it made sense doing all that internal work to the uh, flywheel clutch pressure plate when I could just throw the trans on it put the starter on and start it like that so like I said this is where I'm gonna call it quits for right now and we're gonna come back when the Sun is lower in the sky all right so basically what I'm doing here is I'm turning the key on just as you normally would do in the vehicle because the complete dash is hooked up the wheel is hooked up and I'm spraying fuel down the intake because I don't have a fuel pump hooked up as we speak so I'm just trying to get this motor to roll over in here if it will start and the way that I'm starting the motor is by jumping the starter. And as you guys have just seen it's not starting it's just rolling over so what I'm going to do is, is spray more fuel into the intake in hopes of uh, the spark plugs uh, igniting that fuel basically. Okay, so with that failing, what I decided to do was open the flaps for the intake and spray fuel in. Now this can be very dangerous, so you guys might want to use, uh, have some type of fire extinguisher close or some type of water hose or anything that can outfire pretty quickly because this can cause a fire if you decide to spray a lot of fuel down your intake. And there you have it guys, that is our first signs of life in this motor. Starting. 
so basically what I was doing was I sprayed gas in the intake and uh, we're getting spark so it started up it sounds extremely good so what I'm gonna try to do now is hook up a fuel pump and a fuel hose so that it can stay running and we can see what it does And just as I've warned you guys just now, um, this is the reason why I said be very careful with doing this. Uh, I caused a massive backfire and basically blew out my eardrum. <laughs> I gotta get a better fuel load, man. The fuel load is possible. Bro, running. It's ready to go. Okay, you put fuel in the thing up. In the in, in the, the, in the uh, you see this hole is leaking, that's why I didn't want to keep it started, but let me show you. Running boy. So now we know for sure that we're getting injector pulse, we're getting fire, we're getting everything that we need to actually drop this into the Mustang and be sure that this motor is running. All right, so back at the issue at hand with this motor, it wasn't revving, it wasn't running properly. So now what I'm going to do is try to start it, leave the fuel pump running, even though it's leaking, which is very dangerous, and um, attempt to rev it. So as you guys can see, it's running much better after fixing our time and chain issues. All right, so as you guys have just seen, I got this four valve started on the ground and I'm gonna show you guys right now how I did it. This might look a bit crazy because it is, but it's the complete dash harness from the Marauder. It's the complete dash. I just need to strip the harness away from it. I didn't have a chance to do it as yet. It's a complete engine harness and body harness from the front. And I'm going to start stripping it down as the videos progress because I don't want all of this junk or this extra harness that I don't need. So basically what I did, I hooked up the steering wheel, all of the connectors for that. And I turned the wheel uh, or the key all the way forward. Okay, so let's take the key out. And um, I have my fuel pump in a little half gallon or what I cut just running fuel to the system and I have the pump ran straight to the battery and I jumped the starter right from the starter reason I'm doing that is because the neutral safety switch I haven't disengaged that yet so it's not starting from the key um, grounds specific grounds that have to be hooked up there's a ground in the front of the motor right here coming from the harness on the left side of the motor there's two of them there's a ground behind the motor right here this has to be grounded what i did is i just ran a wire to this ground and then i ran it to these three grounds that are inside the car or at least these are supposed to be inside the car but those three grounds and then there's two grounds by the computer 
right on the computer harness. I just rest those right here on the motor because those have to be grounded. And that's pretty much it. That's how I got this four valve started on the ground. All of the sensors have to be hooked up. Obviously the um, crank position sensor, cam position sensor, and here's a little wire coming from right under the intake manifold. That's this one right here. Let me show you the connector. This is the connector. It's right behind the uh, passenger side head. That is your knock sensor. That has to be hooked up as well. And that's all it takes to start probably any 4.6 or any four valve um, on the ground. I hope this video helped you guys in any kind of way. Make sure to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.